Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna. Let's discuss more in depth about the thoracic vertebra. So in the previous video, I told you what a typical vertebra looks like. Let me go through a few main features of your typical thoracic vertebra. Typical thoracic vertebra are about second to eighth thoracic vertebra. They have a heart-shaped body, their transverse processes are quite large, and their spine is projecting downwards and backwards. Apart from this, they have a superior costal demi-facet and an inferior costal demi-facet. Now let's move on to the topic of atypical vertebra. Of note is that the T1 vertebra is more similar to the cervical vertebra, while the T12 vertebra is a lot similar to the lumbar vertebra. Let's talk about the T1 vertebra. This vertebra is atypical because it Although resembles the typical vertebra, it has a few features that are a little different. The first different lies in its body. The body is not heart shaped in the case of the first thoracic vertebra. The spinous process compared to the typical vertebra is more horizontal and less longer than it is seen in the typical vertebra. Let's move on to the ninth thoracic vertebra. The ninth thoracic vertebra is basically going to be almost like a typical vertebra except that its inferior costal demi facet will be missing. The superior costal demi facet, however, will be present. The next vertebra we're going to talk about is the 10th thoracic vertebra. As you can see, there is a huge amount of difference of the 10th from the typical vertebra. And what is that difference? Firstly is the spine. As you can see, the spine has gotten smaller and more horizontal, as I mentioned earlier. Apart from this, there is no inferior costal demi facet and the superior costal demi facet is not a demi facet. It is a complete circle. So it is a superior costal facet. And apart from that, it is not at the margin of the upper border of the body. This costal facet has shifted a little below than this. As you can see, this was occupying the upper border of the body. This has gone a little lower, or left the margin of the upper border of the body and is going backwards. So this is more important to remember that as we go lower and lower in the vertebra, the costal facet will start to go lower and more backwards. So this was T10. The T11 vertebra similarly has a small spine, small transverse processes. And here again, superior costal facet is complete rounded and it has moved even further lower and backwards, closer to the pedicle of the vertebra. And finally, the T12 vertebra. The T12 vertebra, as you can see, the costal demi facet has shifted to the lowest of lows. The superior costal facet here again is complete rounded and is a lot lower and closer to the pedicle than to the body. 12th thoracic vertebra, the transverse process has become in the form of tubercles, the superior, the lateral and the inferior tubercles. And finally, the, apart from this, the inferior articular process, if you can see, the inferior articular process bears facets that are everted which is different from other vertebra. In their case, they were more concave or they were more flat. In the case of 12th thoracic vertebra, the facets of the inferior articular process will be everted. So if you can see in this, this is the inferior articular facet. These are more concave, while in this they are everted. I hope you can see the difference. So that was an overview of, of all the thoracic vertebras. Let me quickly talk about the attachment on these vertebra. So this is a typical vertebra yet again. What's important is that the body, the upper and lower borders of the body give attachment to the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments. The transverse process gives attachment to the, on its tip, it gives attachment to the lateral costotransverse ligament. On its lower border, it will give attachment to the superior costotransverse ligament. And along the anterior surface, it will give attachment to the inferior costotransverse ligament. Apart from this, the spines will bear attachments of the interspinous ligaments. A couple of muscles are also attached to the spines, like trapezius. As you remember, the trapezius were arising from the spines of the vertebra. 
and uh, other muscles including rhomboids, latissimus dorsi, all of these muscles are basically going to have attachment in the spinous process of these vertebrae. So these were a couple of uh, important attachment. And apart from this, let's go over the clinicals of the vertebra. Normally, when the two halves of a thoracic vertebra do not fuse in the midline, this, the intervertebral foramen, this area will be completely absent. Hence, the vertebra will lie open. The vertebral foramen will have no closure. Hence, the contents of the vertebral foramen, which is the spinal cord and the meninges, they will protrude out. This is known as spina bifida. It is congenital. This occurs in a newborn mostly. Apart from this, there is another important clinical disc. Between each vertebra lies the intervertebral disc. So this is suppose the intervertebral disc. The intervertebral disc is made up of a covering called the annulus fibrosus and an inside portion called the nucleus pulposus. What happens in the third decade of life, degenerative changes occur in this disc. And even if there is a minor sprain or a minor injury, a minor fall, the annulus fibrosus ruptures and gives way to the nucleus pulposus to ooze out. And when the nucleus pulposus oozes out, it usually oozes out posterolaterally from the vertebral column. As you all know, the spinal nerves are also emerging from this area. The nucleus pulposus exerts pressure or compression on the roots of the spinal nerves, resulting in pain in distribution of the nerve affected. An example of this is the, the nerve of your lower limb is the sciatic nerve. And usually there is pain in distribution of sciatic nerve due to the dislocation of the intervertebral disc resulting in a process called the sciatica meaning pain in distribution of the sciatic nerve mostly the lower limb starts to hurt as the intervertebral disc causes pressure on the sciatic nerve so that's all about your vertebra i really hope you understood well today thank you so much for watching